congregation please rise and face the rear of the church.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In holy baptism, Ryan was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sins. St. <coughs> Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Ryan and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs>
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory is to you, O Lord. In this portion of God's Word, we have the promise of Jesus that He has gone on ahead to prepare a place for each and every one of us in our heavenly home. We read, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. 
speak for himself, those words where God laid his claim on Ryan and made him his own, those words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, those words were confirmed when he could on his own profess his faith in God the Father, in Jesus God the Son, and in God the Holy Spirit. This was his motto for that day and for his life. And it says this, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? What are you afraid of? What do you fear the most? <laughs> Sometimes we talk about our fears, and when we're not talking of something terribly significant, sometimes we even get a, a bit on the silly side. I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of spiders, I'm afraid of heights, what have you. No, but deep down, all human beings have certain fears. What is it that we fear? on a very basic level as human beings. Well, in a roundabout way, God, by inspiration, through the words of David, identifies what we as human beings are truly afraid of. He says, I shall not fear anyone, basically because the Lord is my light, and my salvation. And so the psalmist is identifying his fears as not having light and being worried regarding his salvation. Isn't that what we all fear deep down as human beings? Being in the dark and I'm not talking about just being ignorant or not knowing certain facts. No, being in the dark spiritually. Not knowing if God, and we all by nature know there's a God out there, regardless of what science tells us, regardless of what theories are out there, we all know there is a God. Every culture of mankind has always had a God. We know there is a God. What we don't know, apart from God's word, is how that God feels about us. Only in the Bible and God's word do we learn that the Lord, the true God, the only God, truly loves us and forgives us in Jesus. And so, we don't have to be in the dark. We don't have to wonder, does God, this all-powerful controller of all things that happen in this universe, does he love me or not? Do I please him or not? See, we're not left to worry about that anymore. Because the Lord answers with a resounding, yes, I love you, yes, I forgive you, yes, I care for you, in his word. It shines like a beacon. I am your God. I made you. I love you. I sent my son to live a life that you cannot live on your own, a life of perfection that my law demands, and I will credit his righteousness to you through saving faith that I myself will give you as a gift. I love you, I forgive you. That same God who made us and sent his son died on the cross for us in our place and rose again proving his 
his mastery over death and sin and Satan and all the enemies of our faith. And then God, the Holy Spirit, through this saving message, kindled that spark of faith in our heart as he did with Ryan to trust in him for our salvation. And that comes to our next fear. As mortal human beings, when we are born into this world, sinners that we are, we wonder what's going to happen to us when it's time to leave this world. And again, deep down, we all know there will come a time when we will leave this world, when we will die. What's going to happen? That's a great fear that mankind has as well. But that's a fear that is taken away in light of God's word. As the psalmist says, the Lord is my light, I'm no longer in the dark, and he is my salvation. He has a home for me in heaven. I know where this is all going to end up. I'm not going to wind up as some animal that dies along the highway, never to be heard from again, not at all. I will live eternally with him in heaven. As he intended the crown of his creation, all of us, mankind, to live forever in perfection. That's why he did what he did for us. That's why he saved us from our sin. That's why he forgave us so that we would live forever with him. As he says, each and every one of us has a, a hold there in heaven waiting for us because of what Jesus did. Because of his love for Ryan, for me, for you. That's what we're here to look on and to see and to hear today. Not that the enemy has won, not that death has overcome, but the Lord has overcome. The psalmist continues with Ryan's confirmation verse. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? These are rhetorical questions. The answer is obvious. Nobody. Nothing. We fear no one. Not even death. Why? Because the Lord, that Savior God, whom we just explained, has saved us from our sin, given us an eternal life. He is the stronghold of my life life, that stronghold that can never be shaken, regardless of the situations we go through in this brief journey here on earth, and it is brief, sometimes in our understanding we can't comprehend it, we don't know why it's so brief for some, but even if we live to be 110. It's still a brief moment in time compared to the eternity we will spend in heaven. You see, that's the stronghold of life. My life, your life, Ryan's life. As he even now lives in heaven with his Savior. That stronghold cannot be toppled. That stronghold, God himself, cannot be shaken, cannot be weakened, cannot be overthrown, cannot be taken away by any disaster that besets us. He's the stronghold. He's our God. He's Ryan's God. And dear friends and family, he's your God. This is a difficult time in this fallen world, in this world tainted by sin, and each one of us is part of that. Things do not go right. It's, it's right, it's natural for the young to bury the old. 
experience. Yes, he had to marry the young as well. That's why we need these words. The Lord is my light and my salvation. We fear nothing, we fear no one. Because you can't take that away. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. I'm afraid of no one. Because God himself has given us these words and promises. And God has never broken a promise and never will. The promises he made to Ryan and his baptism the promises he made to Ryan through his word and sacrament, those promises are kept. And dear friends, they're kept with us too. And I urge all of you, all of you, whether you're in church every Sunday or, or not, to take a look at these words of God written in Scripture, go to Psalm 27 and think about those words in your life as they were the model for Ryan's life. And then look at what you're afraid of. Is there anything, even a situation is, to tell you the truth, a situation like this is one of my greatest fears as well. But is there any situation that God is not able to handle or get us through? No. No, we fear nothing. So dear friends, thank God we have a Savior. The same Savior that Ryan has is our Savior. And when our day comes to leave this world, we can be sure of what will happen and where we will be because of what Jesus has done for us. Make no mistake about that. And in the days, and there will be sad days, that is for sure. And they won't end until we're in glory, even as Ryan is. But in those sad days, think again to these words of God. They are not idle words. This is not just literature. This is not just feel-good notions. This is God's word. The Lord is my light. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. And we go now to God in prayer. And we pick up on, pay, on the bottom page 4 in your worship. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in this mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of Ryan and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that 
casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days of the ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Ryan and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting His promises, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. We pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. We now sing hymn number 837, Lift High the Cross, and this is a victory song, a victory that we have in Jesus.
Susan Halbeck Hagerbomber. He attended elementary school at Emanuel Lutheran School of Hooper and graduated from Logan View High School in 1989. He earned a criminal justice degree from the University of Nebraska at Kearney, where he was an active member of the Alpha Tau Omega fraternity. After graduation from college, Ryan moved to Kansas City, Kansas, where he would meet his future wife. In 1999, they moved to Arvada, Colorado, where they were married in 2000. They later divorced, but were blessed with three children. Ryan worked at various jobs through the years and enjoyed watching sports, especially Nebraska Cornhusker football. And he also loved to play video games. Ryan is survived by his three children, twins Brody and Ellie, Joby Hagerbomber of Arvada, Colorado, the mother of his children, Sharon McAfee of Arvada, Colorado, parents, Lauren and Susan Hagerbomber of Hooper, a sister, Cindy, her husband, Jack Biggs of Scottsdale, Arizona, and a nephew, Carson, and his grandparents preceded him in death. The Lord gives and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you for being here with family and friends on this occasion. The family invites you to immediately after this service go across the street into the school gym for a lunch. And before we do that, uh, we can say the common table prayer here, so you can go ahead and begin eating right away. We pray, Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. 